of you as Korkami on the internet. He was part of the team who broke uh, Shawan, who made the first and only known so far uh, Shawan collision. And he will go back to another one, MD5, in his talks. And then there will be also a workshop uh, for seen tomorrow that they will talk again. Thank you. Please. Bon, ça marche, ça Ça marche, ça Bon, c'est cool. So, on English, yes. Welcome. Faut ne pas presser, hein. OK. So, welcome to my talk. So, Kill MD5, Demystifying Hash Collisions. So, first, some clarification. It's about understanding the uh, impact of hash collisions. I'm not going to explain the nitty-gritty uh, uh, details, cryptographic details that I don't understand myself. And as a side effect, I will show that MD5 is really broken. That's because that's a consequence. And it's not about the internals, as I said. It's just about the impact, so I don't understand crypto myself. And it's not about new attacks, but it's about new exploits of old attacks, but some of them were never exploited. So there is something new, but it's not like, wow, there's a brand new crypto attack. It's just how to use the existing ones. And as Philippe mentioned, if you want, this talk is quite high level just to understand the risk. And tomorrow there's a workshop to learn how to do your own exploits uh, on the cryptographic uh, collisions. So uh, as I said, I don't know anything. And these attacks are actually all made by Mark Stevens, who's the god of hash breaking, basically. And uh, yeah, and I just do file format stuff. So uh, yeah, that's how we each our role is shared. So first, uh, some background on uh, hash and hash collisions. Then understanding why we try to kill MD5 and how. And then yes, uh, how uh, a high level introduction about how we made it work, but not too complex. So first, what's a hash function? Hash functions MD5 or SHA1 is commonly asked. Uh, called checksum, and it returns from any content a big fixed size value. So the, the size of the value is still the same. And from t any tiny change, the hash value is completely different, which means that it's impossible if I give you even a slightly different hash value to guess the content that will generate this, uh, this uh, the, what produced this hash value. Which means, as a consequence, if the hash is still considered secure, if the hash value is still is identical, the, the contents are assumed to be the same. So for example, it's used to check passwords, like rather than storing the passwords, unlike the hotel Wi-Fi, for example, uh, the, the, which, the security should, should store the hash of the password and then compare the hash of the, the input you entered with the stored hash. Or it's used, for example, when you download VLC, the, check, the SHA-256 is given so that you can check that no one interfered with the download in the pro, in, uh, on the wire or to index files. So it has a lot of use. And sometimes there is a hash collision. So here, in the case of a very simple uh, hash that is not considered secure, two different contents give the same hash value. Uh, but some hashes like MD5 and SHA-1 were initially designed to be secure and used everywhere in protecting a lot of content this way. So a hash collision is just a computation that generates two distinct content with the same hash. We can define some part of this content, but we'll see not a lot. And a very important thing is that it doesn't really create the hash we want. It creates some con two contents that will get some hash that is unknown in advance. And if you just collide the word yes and no, on your workstation, then you will have a lot, most of the file is completely random, so that's the white text, and while a few, there are tiny differences, so this is a hash collision of yes and no. It's like a lot of randomness, even though there, is, there are some minor differences that we cannot, plan, we cannot plan the content in advance, and at the end, despite the difference, the hash is the same on both sides. So if you want to remember, you should remember a hash collision is a big pile of computed randomness with tiny difference. So it is not a lot of control. It's still a miracle on the cryptographic level, but it's still a lot of stuff we don't control. And uh, sometimes people confuse that with, as I said, we cannot produce the, we cannot uh, plan the final hash value, which means if I give you a hash, and you don't have the file, you cannot, there is no such attack yet, even for MD2, which is very old, it's not practical yet to this kind of attack. So guessing, you're given a hash and you create the content to have the value to get that hash, that doesn't exist yet. 
So an important property that we, uh, we use a lot uh, to, break, to abuse MD5 and SHA-1 or 2 is that it processes the content by block from start to end. And if at some point, uh, at, at, some po at the end of a block, the hash is the same, then if you add the same content, because the content is the same on both sides, the hash continues to stay the same. So that's very important that after a hash collision computation, if you add something else, the hash still maintains the same. So we can abuse that with, there is the computation that takes a long time, and then we can happen something that will keep the hash the same value, even if there are still some diff tiny differences in the middle of the computation. So there are two types of collisions. Let's explore the first one, the identical prefix ones. So you start, you give, you're given a prefix, the start of the file, before the computation. This, compu this prefix can be empty, so it doesn't matter. Again, the content and the size of the prefix absolutely doesn't matter. If it's full of zeros, if it's huge, if it's empty, this doesn't change anything, uh, it doesn't accelerate, there is no uh, shortcuts for this. No matter the prefix, it's just what is given as input for the identical prefix computation. Then you have to fill some padding until the block, and the blocks in case of SHA-1 and MD5 are multiple of 64 bytes. Then, so that's, again, it's a full block. So the, whatever the padding is, it's just a rounding of size. Then the computation comes in and we, again, full block full of randomness with tiny differences, and the, these tiny differences are usually at fixed uh, are at fixed uh, places. But and there, despite the difference, the collision, the hash value will be the same after these blocks. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, since now at, the, at block level we have the same value, then we can append whatever we want if it's important for us, and it is important for exploitation. So, uh, summary on identical prefix, takes a single input, generates two files, so if you notice, the prefix is the same for both files, the suffix is the same, and the computation itself is full of randomness, but is almost identical on both sides. So two colliding files with identical prefix collision are mostly different, and there are just a few bits of difference on both sides. Now, that this is an actual example of compute. The prefix is, here is a f file with a few bytes. Then there is a padding that is null in this case. And you can see that they are very tiny. So again, full of randomness. And they are just very tiny difference. And these offsets, the randomness will all be always at the same. So if, if you notice that it's two blocks of 40 bytes, and uh, the difference are at the same offset on both blocks. Now the second type, the, and the last type of uh, collision, is chosen prefix. In the case of chosen prefix, we start with two prefixes. And it could be, again, the content and the size of the prefix doesn't matter. Now, one, they will both be padded to the same length at block size again, and then you compute two blocks that will be appended to those, and the suffix, again, is optional. And again, the computation only depends on the input. The computation cannot be reused for any other input. You have just to restart the computation uh, depending on the input. But even if you flip a single bit in one of the inputs, uh, you have to restart the computation. So this, perfect, this collision is just better. It takes two prefix that can be totally different. You append something to both that will get the same hash. And it, again, it works with any content and any size. So. Again, as I mentioned, just I will explain a bit more. Now we have the yes and the no. We have the padding, and this part is specific to the attack on MD5. It requires some space of randomness just before the actual collision blocks. And then we have a huge block of data. And it's an interesting property that the smaller the number of blocks, the longer the computation. So that's why nine blocks is good for a workstation. But if you want to compute on a, sing on a one or two blocks, then it takes a lot more time, like 400 hours of computation rather than 70 hours, if I recall correctly. So anyway, it's not important at this stage. We'll see that f tomorrow for the workshop, but just it's interesting property. So now let's explore about, let's talk about MD5. And MD5 wasn't supposed to be killed long ago. Because in 2008, there was this superb attack that required 200 PlayStation 3 signing at exact second, two days of computation for each of the four attempts. It was beautiful. And then all InfoSec and crypto experts decided that MD5 was dead because it was broken in practice with the SSL certificate. But the problem is that even if us, we understood that it's not reliable, not every dev and user understand that. So 
As a consequence, MD5 has been effectively banned from, the certifica from certificates in the world of computing. And yes, it has been demonstrated that it was broken, so therefore there was no more research on MD5 because we consider it broken. You will not get any, any uh, academic credits for doing anything with MD5 any further. On files, there was some interesting research on uh, s protocols, but that's really an exception. So it was considered dead, but sadly, well, it's MD5 is still better, the, better than CRT32. And last year, there was this document that says uh, MD5 is okay to be used for uh, indexing files in incident response. And Mark Stevens went on a long discussion online to say this is a bad idea. And I prefer to create files and scripts that do the talking rather than a long conversation. So this is the start of this research, basically proving that in all the cases I, I could, that MD5 is not reliable. So with the existing attacks that Mark Stevens explained to me and with the file format tricks, how can we break at best MD5 with, I mean, prove that it's really unreliable. So since we cannot kill MD5, let's kill MD5 wherever it's still we can, wherever we can add to the best of our knowledge, to the best of the existing attacks. And our contribution are um, instant uh, PDF collision, instant PNG JPEG. Uh, I think I created an MP4 just to collide the Nirvana video clip and its parody. That was my goal in life, probably. Uh, also, the same with GIF, with some limitations. And P, the PE one is interesting because it's not you add a loader, then you had you add a loader that will unpack one of both content. It's transparent. It just takes each the two P are still stored uh, inside the same file. The sections are coexisting together. The and the loader just transparently run both files, and this result is instant. So you can instantly collide your favorite game and wanna cry or Mimi Cats, uh, and the two files will have both files payload will be different, of course, and but they will have the same MD5. So, again, it's new collisions, but I say it's not new crypto attack, it's new uh, exploits of the existing attacks. And they are reusable and generic, so they are on my website, I will give the link later. And for example, the P colliding PDFs is 100% uh, is standard, and we'll see later, but this file is actually, the file we're viewing now is colliding, actually, I'll, I'll reveal that later. So the contents are, the contents are, I mean, we'll explore that, but only it's just a magic trick at file level combined with uh, existing collisions. So it even, of course, it works with uh, past the sold files from directly taken from the website. So these two PNGs have the same MD5 and these two uh, JPEG have the same MD5 and the result, the, the computation was instant because I pre-computed what was needed at the cryptographic level and then it's just file manipulation, just moving blocks around. We'll see that tomorrow in the workshop. Uh, there was an interesting myth that even for some of my colleagues that they thought since every hash collision so far with, with, was with always two files and with always files of other file types, I wanted to prove that they're wrong. And if you're familiar with POC or POC or GTFO, uh, it's a PNG, a, a P, a MP4 and PDF, four file types of, in the same file and they all have the same MD5. So basically it's an instant collision of a document, an executable, an image and a video that you can, I mean, we'll, this file is, again, is, a poly, is a, also a weird file too. So instant collision of four files of different, completely different four file types. And don't be fooled, it's not just the crypto attack. There are some tricks that are necessary for these attacks. And for example, there are no shortcuts for ELF, MACO, ZIP, TAR, or Java class. But the also, the also the good thing is that these tricks can be reused for future collision attack. And for example, the JPEG trick that I used first, uh, that I used on MD5 was also the same uh, trick that I used for the SHA-1 attack. So how? I will not go in very in big details. So the good thing is that these collisions combine standard abuse techniques. So if you're interested in file format manipulation, it's just the same properties of normalizing content to something that you can abuse, then hosting some data that is ignored by the parser, then tricking the parser into working correctly. So it's a good exercise of a hash collision to, to create a hash collision to just uh, hone your hacking skills. It's not, these tricks are not specific to hash collisions. There are not so many attacks, so that's why it's perfectly fine to do a workshop on it. I will go them in details, but as you can see, there are just four existing hash collision attacks on MD5 and SHA-1. And again, 
I want to show the same thing again. And if you see the collision of uh, the standard fast call, uh, so fast call is the fastest MD5 collision. It can take less than a second com to compute. But in the end, we have a lot of randomness and just a few bits of difference, which makes it very hard to exploit. So it's not because it's instant in this case that it's exploitable. So that's why I said that this, the, the one that is the fastest, that is instant, a few seconds, is hard to exploit. While shattered is easy to exploit, but it takes a few, it takes 6,000 years of core computing. And the new attack that is actually not 713 that is, that was updated this year, supposedly takes five times more. So 30,000 years of computing. So I hope you have a good cluster. So, again, as I said, the tricks are not enough. Uh, the, the, fa the fact that the computation could be instant is not enough, and you need some extra tricks. So, the general tricks is based that file formats have a, a header, a body, and a footer. And the important part is that, okay, the header should be at the start of the file, but the body should, could, can be cut in different, put, uh, in different elements that you can move around. That's very important. So, basically, hash collisions is, ex is like playing Tetris. That's exactly why the workshop is called Call Tris. It's like playing a game. So, you, if you take, uh, if you want to create an improved hash collision attack, you take a file format, you look for a normalized form, then you compute prefixes to match this form, and then you use you abuse the parser so that the difference of the collision can create two can point to two different contents. So let's do that graphically. You have two files of different headers, different bodies, and different footer. Now you find a, a magic header that is that both header can be converted to. So it depends. Sometimes you have to have the same image dimensions and so on. You just have to learn your format. Then you add the padding, and then you compute your collision so that whenever then you Input, you put, you append the, co the two contents of the two, of your two source files, so that the difference either point to one or the other, and then you end up with two files that are almost identical despite the, just the difference in the collisions, and one will be rendered as the first file you put, and the second one will be rendered as the second file. And the thing is, this is the computation that can take thousand years, and then you can append this instantly by just moving blocks of bytes around. There's no computation needed anymore. So let's see that as a very high level. Uh, some format like PNG is made of a signature and a sequence of chunk. We don't care. All PNGs are just made like this. There is a command chunk. There's a chunk that is a command. And the, the fact that it's command, it just can just host any data. So it can be used for aligning. And then it can use to store uh, collision data. So that's exactly what we're going to create. We're going to create a comment so that the, collision, the length of the comment is declared to be on the collision data, or exactly on the difference, exactly on the exact byte, so that in two cases, in one case, the comment will be short, so that it will cut, it will be so small, and then you put the comment content of the first image that you wanted to put, and in this case, there is a signature, there's a chunk comment, there's a chunk comment, and then there is a valid image. And because this is a, the valid image is complete, then this is just ignored because the file was already good at this, finished at this page. And in the other case, the comment is longer so that it completely hides the content of the first file. And then it says, okay, it's just a comment. I skip over it. And now I see the, ch the content of the second file. And again, this is the computation was important for at this stage. And at the later stage, it can be just appended by block manipulation. If you want to prevent such exploits, so, 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 so people to ask, uh, it would, whenever you create your next file format, you should enforce the file size directly at the start of the file, or maybe the length of the structure declared in advance so that you cannot, because here the file is seen as being this long, and here it's actually seen as being longer. But if the file had to be declared very early in the file, the size has to be declared very early in the file, then this file would be rejected. But sadly, parsers are not that strict. And if you want to, um, if you if you want to take an existing file format, but you can you want to make sure that there is no hash collisions, then a big an important step is to limit the number of comments. So first, there are two comments, and they contain total garbage, not just uh, alphanumeric data. So by saying okay, remove the comment, you prevent the collision from existing. If you want some practice, it's funny because this movie was actually yesterday in the TV. Uh, I, explaining theory is good, but I also have my page 
that provides free proof of concept so that you can just reuse them and show your colleagues that without needing to do anything. Actually, I have them here on the different tab. Nope. Yeah. So this is the page that the the page that is on uh, my my web page so that you can have pro copyright copyright free uh, PII free files so that you can reuse them in your test to prove that it were the to prove your colleagues that it exists then i also have my page about hash collisions explaining all the tricks and uh, how to create your own so my well, my web page as i mentioned with uh, documentation, script, pre-computed collisions, and also the free test proof of concept so that you can yeah, ver uh, have test case yourself. My workshop that will happen to be tomorrow on exploiting hash collision. Um, yeah, so that's uh, all I think I could come up with uh, for you. There's no excuse that you don't try. So as a conclusion, uh, yeah, FAQ, if you just jump to the conclusion, the, that's FAQ about hash and hash collisions, but you don't need that now. Important is that, important misconception is that it's impossible to match a given hash. The final hash is not known in advance, and a very, and a question I'm always asked is that, is it easier with a smaller file that has absolutely no impact? And again, MD5 collision can be instant, SHA-1 is doable if you're a government, and actually MD5 plus SHA-1 is not a lot of improvement. So uh, there's a paper, uh, I'm not, I cannot give and explain you the detail, but basically MD5 plus SHA-1 is not a lot better than SHA-1. And SHA-2 is uh, a lot stronger, and uh, Mark Stevens says uh, humbly that oh, uh, Sha Sha he doesn't see how SHA-2 could be broken, but as I said, hold his beer long enough, you'll never know. Um, colliding standard files can be trivial and instant. Don't play with fire. Don't use MD5. We, uh, Mark Stevens and I, don't consider uh, MD5 a cryptographic hash. It's a toy function that is very fun. So please have fun. And when you see uh, one of your customers having using MD5, use the workshop material that would be free to learn how to prove that they are wrong. And please share back so that we kind of kill MD5 where very it hides. It's a, as I say, it's a toy function so that uh, Mako actually did a toy collider that runs on the Mega Drive, 16 bits console. The, the Mega Drive is actually older than MD5 itself. It takes an hour to run, but you can even compute uh, uh, MD5 on a totally outdated uh, system. I mean, yeah, that's fun. So to prove that. And again, even if, we ha even if there was the, the 2008 uh, proof that MD5 was broken, it was not enough to prevent people to, to use SHA-1. So a chosen prefix collision was not even enough to kill a hash. So again, I think let do theoretical attack is not scary, but when you have actual files, it's like seeing a sword on your desk. It's like it's a re real and immediate danger rather than theory of an attack. So please... Oh yeah, also reconsider the, that it's not just because it's old that it's useless, because any new f trick that you find now could be reused for SHA-2. And this is exactly why it's so motivating for me to find these tricks, so that next time there's a new computation of a cryptographic attack, a hash collision attack, then we can reuse new tricks. So that's, that's, very, that's very interesting. And remember, as InfoSec professionals, it's our job to go out there and to show the risk and to kill MD5 wherever it hides. Uh, you know, it's easy to point and say, hey, man, come on, MD5 was broken in 2008, do your job, come on, have a clue, for fuck's sake. And rather than, hey, oh, you use MD5, oh, this file format, here, have fun. But it requires more work than just, you know, like this bad attitude. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any question. And thanks a lot for the people who helped me make this talk possible. And of course, Mark. Oh yeah, well, one more thing. As a, this talk and the workshops are, have the same file, this talk is actually, this slide, I, can, I show, can I make it now? Just to convince people? Yeah, sure. So this is the, Rename. It's not easy to type with a microphone. Come on.
moi ça marchait de merde. <rire> This is also an HTML polyglot. If you drop the file on itself, it can pass itself, and then it says, oh, let, uh, give me the other file, the other colliding file. Which is tomorrow's workshop. And they, say, and they, say this, they have the same hash, of course. Thank Any questions? Much. Just to wait for the mic so we get the capture as well. Thanks for the great talk. Um, I just have a question. You gave a few um, duration example of um, processing to, to, cal to calculate a, um, a collision. How much time did it take for you to, to, to process the collision for your two slide decks? Uh, so they are uh, chosen prefix MD5. So they are colliding with MD5. So again, it's the case I will detail tomorrow. MD5 can take uh, starting three hours if you're lucky. It's a matter of luck. Computation, uh, crash collision computation is a matter of trying. And then it's, oh, it doesn't work. It tries again. So it's a bit, but yeah, like three hours if you're lucky. Another one? Nobody. Aurélien. Ah. Je dénonce personne, mais. Ouais. Ah, c'est vrai. What if uh, the people implementing MD5 tells you we are using zip, so it's fine? Well, I. Uh, actually, so a zip is not so secure, but it, there's no like instant recall. So a zip, you can still collide two zips. It takes two collision, two unicall collisions, like the 14 minutes to do to collide two zips. So it's not instant, but you can still demonstrate that. And uh, of course, in the free examples, there are already colliding zips. Okay, cool. Thanks. And the scripts are available on my GitHub, so you can still, without um, effort. Uh, just in this case, it takes two computation of seven minutes, if I recall correctly. So, yeah, 14 minutes for zips, two zips. But it's again, it's 14 minutes every time for two different zips. It's not generic for all pairs of zip, inst like for the PE on PDF. Come on. <laughs> you prepared it together, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, we should move different seats for... Okay, the people who want to <laughs> ask questions. Excuse me, do you have any idea of how many files um, there is on VirusTotal that actually collides on, with MD5? Um, so actually, there is a, a tag on VirusTotal for collisions, but it, only, it doesn't work by magically guessing it. It works when the two files are updated, and most files are actually mine. <laughs> so I kind of monitor this tag a lot, uh, a lot, but uh, sometimes they were. They are actually that, so. They are not. There are only a few hundred, okay. and most of them are mine. But again, you just need to. I, I think if you create a typical collision that is a clean payload and an evil payload, you just want to upload a clean payload, because so that the file is not considered weird by antivirus and stuff, and you don't need to actually put the other one. That's how I. That's my thinking. But for some, you should be able to detect that it came from a collision, even if you get only one sample. If right? it's identical prefix, yes, for sure. But if it's chosen prefix, you can't. We have still some time. Let's start the hex stuff, yes. <laughs> can you explain a bit more what will come to the workshop for people to be attracted? Go away. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. Uh, for, forgive my French. Um, yeah, so tomorrow I will introduce in details the hash collisions, but definitely it will be hands-on from the very beginning, so I don't plan to do anything. So you'll be forced to do everything as I weep and shout, or sing Celine Dion, it's up to you. Uh, and uh, no, uh, we, and we, there will be practice, we'll study PNG format, and we'll do first collision with it. And uh, also the with the GIF one, so we'll study. We'll make GIF, uh, GIF and PNG instant collisions with two different types of attacks, 
And of course, the other attacks takes too long of computing, so they cannot fit in the workshop, but it will also introduce uh, it, how the PE collision work, so that if you have more time, you can still do it on your own. Or maybe that's for a longer workshop one day. Yeah? Thanks. <laughs> Ninja skill. Yeah! If I'm designing a new format, is there something I can do to make your life harder? Depends which side of me. <laughs> but yes, definitely put the, uh, that's what I meant, put the length before, at the start of the file, that prevents all kinds of exploitation. Then also, if you, if you kind of like uh, certificates, which are hard to exploit, if you have a, 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 the length of total substructures, and then a length for each substructure, you cannot modify the length, uh, one length of a structure without, because there is still the length of the parent structure that will be taken into account. But mm, it's also a part, uh, problem with the parsers. For example, PNG works because the CRCs in, PRC are, uh, in PNG parsers are just ignored. Uh, but, so they are there, they, could, they, should be, they should protect against the attack, but they don't. Or the other thing is sometimes uh, the spec says the header should be first, so before there is any collision, but in practice it's not the case. So that's why there is some... Respecting the specs would have been a, pro would have been a first pro pre way to prevent it. That's why if your passers, you know, if your pipeline kind of takes the input file and recreates it and remove the commands and uh, check that and remove appended data, you can effectively kill this kind of... Uh, the, this, kind, this kind of attacks easily. But the, the important point for the Shawan attack, for example, is that the, the Shawan attack was a JPEG in a PDF. I abused the JPEG format. The JPEG shouldn't be valid, but because the whole landscape is that is libjpeg lib used everywhere, by abusing libjpeg, it just works everywhere. In other words, it uh, means that the TLV encoded data makes life difficult for hacking. Well, um, t uh, it depends because, I mean, I, there are t both examples can be useful, right? Depends on the... We'll see. Uh, you can still abuse that with the unicall collision that I didn't really... That is in the, mid in the mid middle. That will be explained uh, during the workshop, but I didn't explain here. Okay, thank you. So, LT, uh, so text length value or length uh, text value, uh, they can be uh, length type value, sorry. Both are exploitable. Okay, you don't want to... Uh, you can play a game, you like Pong, and you make a uh, field travel from... <laughs> I think we are done with the question, right? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't agree. Okay, thanks for your attention. Uh, thanks to you. Okay.